In the 1970s, when the last child of early settlers Adam and Wilhelmina Stein left the family home in Georgetown, Minnesota, a treasure trove by reclusive local artist Annie Stein was finally brought to light. Annie Stein's significance as an artist is for people around here to know shortly after the sodbusters came in with their plows, the art scene began. Annie Stein was born in Georgetown in 1872, right when a couple miles south of her house there were two lawless Wild West tent towns for, built on either side of a railroad bridge that would later become Moorhead and Fargo. Well, Annie grew up really on the raw edge of the frontier, and uh, her parents were, were very, very early settlers around here, and that influenced the artwork that she did, the subjects that she painted. Because they were such early settlers around here, she had a real strong sense of her family's place in local history and uh, their importance in that, their significance in it. So she remained on the farm pretty much her whole life. I don't think she traveled a lot, and she was a completely self-taught artist. So she painted the things that she knew. She painted the things around her, her family, her, her community, her surroundings, and in some cases, neighbors. She was a real homebody. She died young at age 51 in 1923. So people forgot about that Stein girl that was a painter. Then in 1976, the Stein family has a huge auction of everything in that house. And out of nowhere, all of a sudden, there's all these paintings of Georgetown, and people are just shocked. She was very, very prolific. Subject matter varied primarily. It's her family, of course, uh, activities going on in the farm, their farmhouse, but uh, lots of other things as well. She took photographs. To a, a local historians like, like us, it's some of the best illustrations that we have of things like the Great Flood of 1897. How high did it get? Well, you can see that uh, the Stein House is surrounded. Her, her paintings, they show what life was like back then. She was really just a really fascinating person, a Renaissance woman. Uh, she seemed to have dabbled in most of the creative and intellectual pursuits that were available to women of her generation. Uh, she was a painter, a poet, a fiber artist, and a, a gardener, a photographer. She came from a family of photographers. Several of her siblings uh, dabbled in photography. She was probably the most creative of the bunch. Uh, photography in those days, uh, before 1890 or so, virtually all the photographers working were, were professionals. Most people were using glass plates to capture their images, and uh, there weren't a whole lot of amateurs that were involved in that. Uh, Annie was one of them, however. Uh, it was a challenging process, and it was difficult, and fairly expensive. It was an, it was an expensive hobby for, uh, for somebody living on a farm in rural Minnesota, I'm sure. Uh, but she seemed to very, very much enjoy it and, uh, and reveled in it. In some of Annie Stein's photography, we see people, they're posing for the photo, sitting in the Stein living room that probably not family. And on the back of these pictures, we see this kind of stamp or logo or something that says Annie Stein photographer. Um, so she seems to be at some level of professionalism. She was proud of her work. I see somebody who is uh, trying to kind of poke at the glass ceiling. She does a lot of self-portraits for photography and studying those pictures. We think, oh, she, she's not really, it's not so much a self-portrait, uh, it's she's showing off her artwork, the lace that she made or the, the pillows next to her that she made, as well as taking portraits of herself in front of her paintings. So on the back of many of these paintings, and many of Annie's paintings, it says, please do not criticize this work, this work too much for God alone was my master. Uh, and we just loved that 
phrase because it tells us a lot about Annie, actually. It tells us that she is self-taught. Now, God alone was my master. What she means by that is that she didn't follow the traditional master-apprentice way that artists back then were taught. She didn't go to college. So it's, it's humility, but I think also uh, hidden in there is a kind of as much as Minnesotans can get to bragging, you know, because it's, it is humble in one way, but she's also saying that God alone is my master. And it's, there's a little bit of pride in there, I think, maybe too. Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008, the North Dakota Council on the Arts, and by the members of Prairie Public.